Yo, what's up, people? This is Shelvon. A lot has been said about the Acolyte, and it looks like Nerd Drata dropped another video, so I'm not sure what the else is left to say. It's a terrible show written by terrible people to an audience that don't exist, and they seem to hate us who like Star Wars, but I don't know. So let's see what he has to say. All right. Here we go. Cultural critics like the Critical Drinker and Nerd Roddick have dubbed the show lore breaking for its recent revelations, but their commentary isn't productive. Rather, it encourages bigotry and hatred over a show. So they're not allowed to give their opinion, is that's what you're saying? Okay. All right. Okay. Show that's just getting started. What? It encourages bigotry and hatred over a show that's just getting started. Yeah, they don't like a thing that I like, so therefore it's encouraging bigotry somehow, even though they're just stating their opinion. Okay. What the fuck? <laughs> power one, the power two, the power many. <laughs> yeah. The power one. I'm not exactly sure what the purpose of her making a diss track to her customer base, because that's basically what the fans are their customers and you calling them bigots and all that is not going to actually make them want to be your customer. So I'm just saying. One, the power two, the power of many. <laughs> wow. Okay. I didn't want to make this video, but considering the events of the last week where we found out that the acolyte isn't ruining star Wars, we are in that's the royal we by the way yeah. the 14 percent audience score should be embarrassing for the reviewers and apparently the Kill critical Munger. drinker and yours truly through our reviews of a poorly written streaming show are fostering hatred and bigotry keeping all that in mind i have decided to reconsider and apologize for nothing let's talk about the acolyte episode four nothing previously happened. On the cliff notes, nothing happened. It was very boring and short. Okay. Yakala. You lost your entire family. Killmonger. Your mother's, your sister. I carried them. I created them. The power of one. The power of two. The power of many. The power of one. Where's their father? They have no father. You are not. <laughs> Ascension is about walking through fear. It is about sacrificing a part of yourself, mm -hmm. the power of many, mm -hmm. instead of the power of one. Okay. <laughs> All right, okay, okay. Oh! Look at this dude. Just look how bad that is. It's like they couldn't just hire a, an older actor. But, okay. The Acolyte episode four is thankfully a very short 27 minutes and 11 seconds, not counting the previously on in credits, which quite frankly isn't enough to review, but thanks to the Acolyte's lead actress, Amanda Stenberg, providing us with some bonus content, now there is. The Acolyte episode four day is filled with slow moving establishing shots, multiple exposition scenes, characters slowly walking down hallways or slowly walking up to doors, characters talking to each other, all right, to be fair, the prequels had a lot of this too. So uh, I'm just saying, it was a lot of meetings, a lot of people walking and talking. So to be fair. Each other not making much sense. And we're going to skip all that. It opens up with an establishing shot of Planet Gobbledygook, where we find the <laughs> Wookiee cooking and possibly investigating the lesbian space witches. Man, at least we get to see a Jedi Wookiee fight, right? Can't wait for that. This is followed by a scene with Osha, who was coincidentally Osha trained to put out fires in space, crushing on X-23. And who couldn't see this coming with a Disney Star Wars product? Two young girls crushing on each other after roughly four minutes of screen time together. Now, to be fair to the House of Mouse, if they break up next episode, it checks out. Jedi Master Nepo does some girl <laughs> bossing and quickly assesses that May was trained by a Jedi. How? From this hologram. The nepotism is strong with this one, but I'm not really sure how she figured it out. Maybe it was these awesome Jedi moves. I 
I am still amazed that this went through everything that you, it needs to go through to make a TV show. And nobody thought that this was crap. I'm amazed by that. <laughs> then Jedi Master Nepo spends the rest of the scene trying to figure out what the hell Jedi Master Soul is saying. <laughs> May's objective is not solely our own. And despite absolutely nothing happening in this episode, yeah. Leslie Headland wouldn't want to miss an opportunity to once again take George Lucas's lore to Harvey's couch. Hey, remember the guy who said this in The Phantom Menace? Impossible. The Sith have been extinct for a millennium. This is Jedi Master Conehead, or Kiati Mundi, who wasn't supposed to be born at this time until, of course, Disney Star Wars decided to retroactively destroy more lore. And honestly, all they had to do was say that he was a Jedi from the same species. And this would have solved any of this little crap. But, you know. That's the least of this mm -hmm. scene's problems because yeah. apparently there's a deleted scene out there where after saying that the Sith have been extinct for a millennium, he follows that up with, except for that time we ran across a coven of lesbian space witches where two of them managed to conceive twin daughters without a father, who incidentally didn't look anything like their mother, I mean, where are the horns, but they were created by this thing called the Thread. So that really dark Lord looking dude carrying around a red lightsaber who trained <laughs> May couldn't possibly be a Sith. It's not important. Please keep in mind, this is the same Disney Star Wars that's been destroying George Lucas's lore for Mary years Poppins. and doing things like having Han Solo walk into a lightsaber, Luke Skywalker overdosing on the force, Princess Leia died, not really sure how. Somehow Emperor Palpatine returned and their one hit series is a repurposed Boba Fett and a repurposed Yoda. And when they got around to doing a Boba Fett series, they made him Boba Fett. And I tried to cut back on the beers so the stomach wouldn't be out too far. And then there's Obi-Wan Kenobi who's <laughs> Okay. All right. Okay. Sole purpose was to watch Luke Skywalker until Disney Star Wars got a hold of him and he decides to fuck off twice to fight Darth Vader twice and not mention it later. Meet a toddler Princess Leia that Princess Leia fails to mention later. And the Jedi Master Obi-Wan Kenobi had a real hard time getting through a gate he could clearly walk around. And Ahsoka being alive to usurp Luke Skywalker's story. In other words, it's on brand for modern Disney Lucasfilm. Anyway, Soul and Jedi Master Nepo Please. devise a plan to once again use Osha as bait to draw out May. And this brings us to the most poignant scene in all of the Acolyte, the use of pronouns in live action Disney. Why would you put the pocket up there? Like, it looks like she's holding onto her boobs. Disney okay. Star Wars. Is he or they uh, with us? And the rest of the 27 minute episode is spent with the clueless Jedi in a race Kill to get to Kelnaka, the Wookiee Jedi, before Asian Ezra Miller and May. Then we get a heel turn that might give you whiplash. May is good now. You heard me right. I don't need to do this anymore. I don't need to kill a Jedi without a weapon. I don't need to keep this deal. What? Osha being alive changes everything. What? That's not how the Sith works. If you get to the point where your master is sending you on missions, you're down for the cause. So you're not giving up that easily. And this wouldn't bother you because you're down for the cause and you'd probably want to figure out a way to kill your master because that's how the shit works. My loyalty is to Osha, not your master. What I'm going to do is surrender myself to Kalnaka and then turn myself into the Jedi. No. You gotta be fucking kidding. And this shouldn't surprise anyone. Nobody thought that diverse female antagonist was actually going to be evil. Of course, she's going to be oppressed somehow, and her actions will be justified, even being responsible for the death of two Jedi. Down with the patriarchy. And leave it to a Disney Star Wars Gen Z villain to give up on revenge because it's hard. This brings us to <laughs> Kelnaka, the Jedi Wookiee, arguably the most compelling thing about this series. It would have been awesome to see him fight, right? Well, he dies off screen. And what was the reason we didn't get to see a Jedi Wookiee fight? The budget. Listen, guys, they only had $180 million. What do you expect? What? Each one of these episodes cost as much as Godzilla minus one. And you didn't have the budget for a dude in a costume to fight a lightsaber battle. Make it make sense. And after sitting through 27 minutes and 11 seconds of an episode that felt like it was two hours long, you would think this <laughs> Disney Star Wars okay. intricately written story would lead to something. After we had two girls crushing on each other, pronouns in space, and a Wookiee Jedi killed off screen. Nah, Smilo Ren shows up and pushes a bunch of Jedi. <laughs> Mm. 
And the big mystery to the fives and tens of people who are actually interested in the show is who is Smilo Ren? Is it Asian Ezra Miller? It could be, but I'm leaning towards something like this. Yeah. Credit to Disney. Okay, that will be on point for Disney. So, okay, I'll give you that. Star Wars for not making an episode as bad as the previous. The good news with the Acolyte, we're halfway through the season. The bad news, Come we're only halfway through the season. And just when you think things couldn't get worse for Lucasfilm, they do. Series star Amanla Stenberg, who has the amazing ability to play two characters exactly the same way with the exact same haircut, decided to come out with a diss track against Star Wars fans. A diss track that Amanla feels so strongly about that she's copyright claiming absolutely everyone who posts it on X or YouTube. In what's likely an industry first, a TV show star has written and released a song and a music video complete with dance moves in response to racist backlash against the show. So if you're in a terrible show and you're white, it's just people who, I guess they're sexist then. If you're white female, then I guess you're just sexist. But if you're a black female, then there is sexes and races, even though there's no indication of any of that. So, okay. So bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for him. A song with a chorus, and I quote, we so bored, don't fuck with yo discourse. Yet you made an entire song about it. Now, most of this song is in response to End Wokeness putting up an older interview with Trevor Noah where Amanda Stenberg says she wants to make white people cry. That had nothing to do with- Keep in mind, uh, I just found out that she's mixed. So both of these people are mixed. They're, they're constantly talking about white people even though they're part white. Okay, I don't really understand that, but okay with the acolyte because taking things out of context to support a narrative doesn't help anyone i want you to remember that amanda stenberg the adult pretender who's worth three million dollars speaks mostly of oppression in her song but she also says this speaking of which journalists i'm looking at you did you forget it's your job to provide the truth spreading divisiveness mining the metrics and date Seem you gave up on all your ethics for money and views. And yeah, I can tell you is. that people are tired. Yes, they are. Because you can absolutely apply what you said there to Disney, the company you work for. And the kids don't trust anything they view. And you're right. But you don't have to worry about that with the Acolyte because no kids are watching it. Another lyric from the song by adult pretender worth $3 million, Amanda Stenberg. And now you listening, I'ma tell you something fascinating. They spinning woke, bastardizing it, and appropriating it. Last I recall, woke was something we created. Did you create it, Amanla? Speak truth to power. I don't hate to break this to you, Amanla, and anyone else at Lucasfilm, because apparently you need to hear this again. You are the power. You work for one of the biggest entertainment companies in the world who owns ABC, ESPN, Hulu. They bought Fox for $72 billion. They're a little influential. They're also, and forgive me if you've heard this one before, the same company that thanked a concentration camp in China for Mulan, covered up Chadwick Boseman's face on the Black Panther poster for China, shrunk Finn on the Force Awakens poster for China, a company well known for providing the discourse and gaslighting what's left of the divided fandom for years. Now, as far as Disney Star Wars is concerned, Amanla, you're just the latest shield they can hide behind to cover for a bad TV show. And your diss track takes things wildly out of context and conflates them to support a narrative. One that calls Star Wars fans, your potential paying customers, racist, yeah. which unfortunately is on brand for modern Disney. Here's how the game plan works. Preemptively attack your fans by calling them racist before your crappy show comes out. The show comes out, everyone says it's crappy. Continue to call the fans racist. One of the stars makes a video calling the fans racist. Access media articles are written in support of the actor calling the fans racist. And then the inevitable support from Disney or Star Wars or both calling the fans racist while supporting the actress. And please tell me when this has ever worked. The Acolyte is the marvels of Star Wars. It was something that was predictably bad. We just didn't know how bad it would be. Recently, a Spaceballs sequel was announced, oh. and it's well over a decade too late because Disney Star Wars is the parody. And as far as independent reviewers, 
fostering hatred and bigotry. The only ones I see doing that are Disney. Certainly, there have been times where, you know, there's no way we're hiring a white male person. It's kind of unspoken. Uh, there are times when it's spoken. But How would they say it? No way we're hiring a white male person. Nergerotic.com. If you like what you heard. Mm, man. It seems like most of that video was about the, the stuff around this episode because the episode was kind of crap. Yeah, like, there's not really much to talk about. It's just, I think most people are just over this stuff, just really and truly. Just wanted to stop. So I'm going to enjoy House of Dragon because it's an actual good show that has all the stuff that they're saying that people don't like. So it has the race change characters. It has the female leads. It has the blah, 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 blah. But this is also well written. So therefore people like it. All right. So I'm going to include the original video in the description below. Please like, share, and subscribe and all that fun stuff. And I am out. Peace.